Um, but in terms of what we're going to deliver this year, we're, we're planning on delivering nine zones. So, so, so Solace 1, 2, 3, Esperanza 1, 2, 3, and Fortune 1, 2, 3. So, so all of those are eight kilometers by eight kilometers. What is up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dap Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. Today, I've got two awesome guests here, which are going to be talking about everything Coinocopius. Now, I don't think either of these gentlemen need an introduction, but we're going to give them a second to introduce themselves here anyway. First and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and bring up Rob Gregg, one of the four co-founders of the Coinocopius Hello. game. Rob, welcome aboard. How are you doing today? Not too bad, yeah. I am doing great, doing even better now that I got you and our right. second guest here live. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and bring him up. That's going to be Josh Jones. Josh, welcome aboard. How are you? Good, man. It's good to see you. Likewise, likewise. I'm just kicking off my day. I just got my coffee and I'm ready to talk about Kopi. How are you guys feeling? Good, good. It's early here, but Rob's got a, a afternoon Sorry. coffee. What you're about to have tea, right? All right, good. Yeah, thank you both for joining us. Um, I, I've been looking forward to this. I think it's been more than overdue. I've interviewed the both of you guys multiple times in person, but I think this is actually the first time that we're doing an interview online. And so the Cornucopia team continues to build, continues to deliver. And I want to talk about 2024, given the fact that 2023 was such a huge success for you all. So uh, maybe we just kick things off with a brief introduction. You know, again, I cover Copia on my channel quite a bit. But for anybody who's hearing about Cornucopia for the first time, you know, what is the Copia metaverse? Uh, well, Cornucopia is a game. We're, we're primarily an MMO RPG game where humanity, the little bit of the lore background is that humanity has ascended the Earth's surface. There was a great calamity that caused a max, mass exodus, and they've ascended into these floating domes in the clouds. And each of the domes has a curated experience, or eventually when we allow, empower a community to create uh, inside those domes, there will be community experiences as well. Uh, but yeah, there's it, it's given us the ability to have great variety in their, our game, uh, which accommodates the huge vision that we have. So yeah, it's a metaverse and a game, but we're gradually moving in the metaverse direction. Uh, and primarily starting with an MMO RPG game. Thank you for the introduction there, Josh. And just to give the viewers a heads up as to what we're going to be chatting about. First and foremost, we're going to jump into the Kopi file note sale. Um, this is a sale taking place not only on Cardano, but also on Ethereum. And I want to kind of just quickly touch base as to the experience of feedback and what we can expect, you know, in terms of the potential rollout and utility for these NFTs. Following that, you guys have recently gone cross-chain. Um, I think you, have, you guys have been actually cross-chain for longer than a lot of people realize with your initial token launching on BNB and then migrating over into Cardano. But more recently, you guys have branched out and um, provided liquidity for the Cornucopius token on Ethereum as well via Uniswap. So I want to talk about why the the focus on cross chain, and then especially, and, and then moving forward, what we can expect with respect to that, and then moving over, um, there was some. Uh, staking opportunities, or there are some staking opportunities on your upcoming roadmap for 2024. So I want to talk a little bit about that as well, given the fact that we've had one staking opportunity that took place back in 2023, which I covered here on my channel. And then last but not least, let's talk a little bit about some of the upcoming features. Um, I think there's quite a bit coming down the pipes. You guys released a dev update about two weeks ago. So I want to quickly touch on where things stand and when we can expect to finally get our hands on some of those things. Now, for the viewers watching here, Rob and Josh, are not just co-founders, they're also YouTubers in their own rights. They host what they call Kopi Cafe once per week. They've been doing it for over a year. And so if you guys are not already aware, make sure to go ahead and follow them on YouTube. They've got quite the amount of content there. And again, as things roll out specifically, you know, um, relating to the project and just dev updates, they do break those down. And from time to time, we also get some leaks on there as well. Um, the very last thing I want to just quickly go ahead and mention is the fact that Kopi Cafe has actually branched out and is now supported, if I'm not mistaken, on some of the major podcasting platforms, which now includes TuneIn, Amazon Music, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. 
So now that we've got the fluff and the introductions out of the way, let's jump into the Kopi file node sale. Um, I'm not sure who wants to take this one, whether that's Rob or Josh, but do you guys mind just kind of recapping the utility of the file nodes and then where things kind of stand? I believe we just wrapped up um, tier number four and that has recently sold out. Rob, you want to take the nodes question? Yep, sure. So so the, the Kopi file nodes, this is an opportunity for the the community to host some of our key infrastructure. So, so the way that the the game works is, is currently it's things about eighteen gigabytes at the moment. It's, it's growing all the time as as we add more and more content. These are well, as the players join. It's an it's an early pre alpha testing at the moment. But as as the players join, they create an account on our on our website, and then they download the launcher. Now, the launcher is is a small PC application that is then responsible for downloading the, the full game and also making sure that it's secure and, and, and it also connects the player's Web3 wallet so we can see what NFTs you've got and, and, you know, and they can be brought in the game. So what the nodes do is currently when you're downloading the game, you're downloading from our central server and the nodes are actually our very first step into decentralization. Um, so the, the nodes will hold the entire game and as individual players want to download the game, the request will go out, you will connect to multiple different nodes and small chunks of the game will be downloaded. Um, so that there's, there's no real point of failure and it is completely uh, decentralized and distributed. It actually turns out that we, we can, in, in a lot of cases, we can speed up the, the download of the game. So, you know, give give a much better experience i mean for example i was updating um a game yesterday which was 80 gigabytes and um that took just just under two hours uh, for a traditional game you know and we and we've had we've had our game that, that we think when we do go to about 80 gigabytes we'll we'll probably be able to download that in in less than half an hour so so a, a much better user experience he would uh, I, I would just want comment and I think most people in our community know this, but for anyone new, uh, he meant our very first uh, move towards decentralization with the game infrastructure. We've obviously got a token that is decentralized mm -hmm. and the right. uh, player owned assets or NFTs are also decentralized and and the the goal of cornucopius is gradually over time to take more and more steps in the direction of decentralization. Yeah, thank you for that um, addition there. I wanted to just pose a quick follow-up for Rob. So if I'm not mistaken, you guys have a working prototype. And from what I hear, or at least the word around town, is that you may have actually gotten your hands a little dirty and, you know, contributed to that. You know, so being a, a co-founder, you know, how's it been to kind of put those priorities aside and then kind of get into the nitty gritty and actually coding and contributing to the to the core game and to the final yeah. themselves. I, I mean I've been a I've been a developer all my life really moving into to different parts of the business but you yeah you you can never yeah every now and again you have to to scratch that itch you know when you get the opportunity to build a game uh, and and especially infrastructure you know yeah the, it was you know, it was a, it was a little bit too tempting for me so I, so I did build the original actually the original launcher so that was that was a prototype which we then uh, you know took on some people and they produced it in, into this amazing launcher that we have at the moment and and yes I was part of of, of the the team that built um, the original nodes um, and and again we will use the the same um, the the same methodology as in now we know that the prototypes work in we, we can then build strategy around that and see if it will fit in with our infrastructure and we can get that now um, redone in in a way that can be supported because obviously i can't support the application so so we, we will create um you know a better product you know prototypes are there just kind of like a proof of, of of concept so so the the version that we will are working on will be compatible with windows mac and linux and um yeah we we've got a we've got a, our you know our research and development i think you can never stop doing that and and it's kind of all hands on deck really so you know from from the ceo all the way down to 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 whoever anybody can community as well you know they can all contribute ideas and and you know some of them make it some of them 
develop for years and never see the light of day some of them yeah like, like in the in the case of the nodes here, here we are today talking about them and that it's important to note that we we have a a lead in mind that we have interviewed and been talking with and is working out the original uh, plan, so to speak, with Rob uh, for implementing the, the commercial quality node system. So uh, that is in process of, of being handed off. Um, and then Rob will oversee that uh, also with uh, Jeff as well being involved. Yeah, I mean, we have a large growing team. You know, we, at the moment, we have 33 members within our team. I, I'm, I'm with contractors as well. There's over 50 people working on the team. So, yeah, it doesn't all fall on Josh and my, my heads. There's a lot more of us behind the scenes working hard. Yeah, and I want to just take a minute to just congratulate a few members from the community that have actually joined the team, right? So um, shout out to Scruffy and more recently, shout out to Seven, who I believe will be working with you guys to actually have some of this content um, included in the Cornucopius metaverse as well. And so again, um, just it, it's impressive to see people that have been with you guys from early on and them finally being able to contribute to something that they're so passionate about, which is Cornucopius games. So I've got two quick questions with respect to the file nodes, and then we're going to keep the conversation moving into this next topic, which is going to be the focus on cross chain. So, you know, a lot of, um, the early portion of the game is available for public testing. When can we potentially expect testing of the file notes or just even documentation surrounding how to set up a file note, et cetera, for the community to start playing around with them and then start giving you guys the feedback that you guys need? Well, it's, it's at the moment, it, it's something that we are planning the next stage for. So that then has to be, you know, rigorously planned and then developed and, and then tested internally. Um, and then it will follow just like we did with our game. We, we will invite then some of the, the community testers to test that. Um, we are we are planning on a go live of the nodes for the 1st of July. So somewhere along that, that time plan, I don't think you'll see anything in terms of community testing in this first quarter. Well, probably towards the the end of of the the second quarter, um, my May June time. Well, definitely by June. Then I think you you we will release a lot more information when we will know what the final product will look like and its performance and and, and the requirements and everything else that goes with it. Thank you for that, Rob. And the final question here is surrounding different types of nodes. So right now we have the file node NFT sale, which is currently underway on Cardano. Um, just kind of digging through the Kopi wiki. And for anybody who's not aware of what that is, it's basically the one-stop shop for everything Cornucopius from the roadmap to NFTs. You know, if it's in Cornucopius, it's captured in the Kopi wiki. So I'll go ahead and leave the link to that down below. But in digging around there, you know, I noticed that there is not just the file nodes, there's also the game node and the data nodes. So do you mind touching on how how those relate or how they differ and then whether or not we could potentially expect sales for those as well in the near future. Yeah, what well, we're working on, you know, I, like I say, a, a couple of other um, prototypes as well. So, so, so there is a third, but we won't mention the third one. The, the data nodes will be like a decentralized database or maybe a coordinating, a bit of matchmaking, um, all, lots of services that we need to do under the hood that, that are just kind of quick go and get some information, store them, save them, move move uh, things around. So we, so we have plans in that area, but that is that is definitely something that will probably take longer to develop. And, and it may or it, it may never come to fruition. It might just be a service that that we just we just continue to run ourselves. Mm -hmm. However, game nodes, I think that is something that that we are looking um, closer at. And, and I think that there's an opportunity there again as the game grows, especially around potentially custom domes, how they're hosted as well, and how other game services. Because as you kind of transition through our game, we've 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 got the the large uh, explorable worlds, and 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 as you go into the smaller experiences, um, you will you will often jump into. I will say experiences rather than mini games, but like racing, for example, where you, where that, that's currently restricted to, to say sixteen races. Now, this these don't need the the full infrastructure behind them. So, but there's opportunities like that, especially when it comes to custom domes, 
where we can we can offload some of the the central host into those but again this is still experimental that we're working on at the moment it, it may not come to light but i i do think that that's a, a great opportunity um and being being an owner of this the these early levels of the of the file copy nodes will give you a whitelist that and you know first opportunity of any of the other nodes that come in the future Thank you, Rob. I appreciate that very much. Let's keep the conversation moving here. And let's talk a little bit more about your guys' recent move to um, Ethereum, as well as just being more uh, blockchain agnostic. So as I mentioned, this was about maybe a month, uh, maybe a little bit more now, we saw the Kopi slash ETH liquidity jumping onto Uniswap, arguably one of the uh, most popular DEXs on Ethereum. You know, why the transition over into Uniswap, why the transition over into that ecosystem? And where do you guys see, you know, Cornucopius in the long term? You know, will Cornucopius also be on other blockchains, etc.? cetera? Um, I'm not sure if this one, Rob, you want to take or maybe Josh? Uh, Josh needs to go. I'll, I'll take, <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, so the, the reason, you know, company strategy from the very beginning was we're blockchain agnostic. Cardano is our home. That's where we started. We have strong beliefs in the future uh, that uh, Cardano is taking the path that they're taking and the way that they're utilizing peer review and, and really just building a very solid foundation. Uh, but at the same time, and it was a great ecosystem to get started in, one that we were very well familiar with, but always the, the approach is, and you know how it is in crypto, people get isolated in their communities that, that they really feel fond of. And the reality is, is that we want this game to be available to everyone and get it in front of everyone. And so cross chain and, and, and furthermore, to add to that point, we also believe in interoperability as well. That's important in an emerging industry that we have to, to make it a much more powerful use case for everyone and to bring in mass adoption, you really need interoperability. And so, uh, as a, as an approach, we really wanted to scale out to all of Web3. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, we're going to adopt and integrate with every blockchain and do every in, NFTs on every blockchain. That's just not reasonable. However, the, the move to Ethereum next was, okay, there's a large amount of people that are in the e Ethereum ecosystem. So that just makes a smart next move for us to really, uh, because where the game is at and i know you're about to ask questions about our game status but we're in the point where we're building out the infrastructure on the aws side to to really be able to scale this to thousands and and eventually millions of users uh and that infrastructure is starting off and it's making quick progress so we're we're almost at the point where we're ready to unlock that in the next uh, few weeks which is which is huge so that means now we're ready, uh, we're, we're becoming a lot more ready to broaden our reach and get a lot more players in the game. Now, obviously, we still have a lot more content that needs to start coming out. But as that unfolds and as we get more content, we're going to start targeting mainstream gamers as well with our marketing. But the first approach was to broaden through interoperability to the ETH ecosystem, which improved very uh, a very good decision. You know, we've got, I think now, almost a thousand uh, new holders from the ETH ecosystem. And so uh, we, we plan to continue and expand that. Uh, and then eventually, and it might even happen this year, we'll start targeting with our marketing more of the mainstream gamers, which is which is huge for us. And, and that's that's also why we built and led with the quality that we have been uh, building in is because you're not going to get mainstream gamers uh, without that. So th there's high, high expectations of caliber of a project with mainstream gamers. You see it even with with uh, games that were just recently released. The community is uh, in, in mainstream. They're slaughtering them. And it's actually some of these are, are great games. I'm not going to say any uh, names in particular, but they're they're great games. And yet the, the community still comes at them and and just throws a fit about certain things. And it's like, uh, so you, our caliber has to be high. Anyway, long answer, but there you go. 
no, I appreciate the, the nuance there. And I definitely agree. Um, I think you guys have shown that you guys move slowly, but methodically, and you guys have been able to deliver since I've been covering you guys here on my channel. I've got a follow a couple of follow ups there for you, Josh. Um, you know, I think the narrative, which is multi chain is only just beginning. So it doesn't surprise me that, you know, you guys are making that move. And um, we've seen other products within Cardano also make a very similar move. Just to name a few. We've got World Mobile, Meld, Genius X, and Book.io. You know, again, it's not to say that, you know, these chains are better than Cardano, but when you take a look at blockchain, um, there's a lot of use case and, and a lot of utility outside of Cardano, just like there is within Cardano as well. Um, another thing I that you that mentioned when you when you look at gaming though, gaming is not just on a PC. A game is on an Xbox, a PlayStation, or a Nintendo. You know, you, you just go where the players are. So there's, so there's no reasons why Web3 people would just be on one chain. So, so we use the, exactly the same philosophy as that. That's a really great point that you add there, Rob, or that you add there too, Rob. Um, and I wanted to also just highlight, you know, when uh, Josh was speaking, the community. You guys are 40,000 strong in Discord, and I could see that bumping up to 60, 70, 80,000 now that you guys are expanding and reaching out into new ecosystems. And so um, that'll be really interesting to see exactly how those two communities come along again with Cornucopia is kind of at the center, right, which is what's unifying them um, moving forward. Now, I have to quickly ask, because the file node sale will be happening on Cardano, which it's already taking place, as well as on Ethereum, you know, from a marketplace standpoint, you guys have built out your own NFT marketplace. I think one of the um, most robust, right, with um, checks relating to Discord roles. They've also got um, just the ability to purchase, you know, utilizing the Kopi token directly on the platform. And again, you guys built this from scratch. Will the same platform kind of be enhanced to support mm -hmm. ETH and some of those tokens from the ERC20 network? Or will there be some sort of separate way that you guys go about actually executing the sale on Ethereum? I know that the sale's TBD, but is there anything that you guys can share with respect to that? Yeah, it's being it's being added right now. We're we're almost there to where we can launch the ETH node sale on the same marketplace that uh, everyone is used to. So it's in the works. And we have a lot that needs to happen with marketplaces. Um, you know, we're, we're going to build out, a, we're in process of building out a new one that's also more integrated with our player account and login systems as well, but that's going to be a longer term vision. And then we've also built out a third party marketplace, tokenriot.io, which is uh, maybe some of you have heard of it, but that allows us to have the ability to really customize and give special features to our NFTs that uh, may not be provided by other marketplaces in the ecosystem. So if you haven't checked that out yet, please go to tokenriot.io. It's it's inventorying assets from all other uh, NFT marketplaces. We started with JPEG store, but there's a lot uh, happening there. It's, it's gonna be a great project as well. W wanted to take a second to mention that in case people hadn't checked it out. But the reason for all of that is uh, you know, it is an early stage ecosystem. So had we had launched on Ethereum, uh, there would have been a lot of third party providers that we might have chosen to go with to speed things up. So, um, you know, you said a couple of seconds, uh, a couple of minutes ago that we're building slowly and methodically. We are and we're also building really quickly as well. So like there is a lot that, you know, if this was a triple A game studio, you wouldn't have seen anything yet. You wouldn't have been playing anything. It would have been another three years. So in a lot of ways, we've gone incredibly quickly. But at the same time, we we have been uh, slower in decision making and slower in the building of early stage assets that uh, you wouldn't have had to do had you started somewhere else. But we like that. Uh, we've got a strong team and we've built our own tech and and that's going to prove invaluable to us as we move forward. Uh, it's a, it's it was tough for sure. We've taken on a lot uh, and that creates a lot of challenges. But I think we've done done a good job of those challenges. We've made plenty of mistakes without a doubt. There's a lot of learning that's been going on. But, uh, you know, I think we've done a great job and people. One thing I'll say is that the tech experience for buying NFTs uh, that we created uh, early stage Cardano um, tech was phenomenal. People really loved the user experience. That was a lot of the feedback that we got is this is the slickest NFT purchasing that that we've done. And this was, you know, 
uh, years back, uh, a year and a half, two years ago, when we we ran our first uh, our first NFT sale on our own marketplace, uh, people were very excited about that. So, yeah, long way to go though. You guys have come a long way, and I'm happy to say that I was able to be a part of those early experiences contributing back over. And I think that's really um, what has made the community kind of fall in love with Cornucopius is the fact that you guys are building along with the community. You guys aren't taking that waterfall approach where you guys are doing everything behind closed doors and then just dropping it on us. You guys are constantly asking for the community to jump in and test. And as Rob mentioned earlier, you guys are always listening for feedback and ideas. It doesn't mean that everything will always make it in. But if it um, makes sense and if the community wants it, you guys do a really great job of listening and including some of those aspects. So um, thank you for that. And thank you for the clarification on the rollout of the game there as well, Josh. Let's keep things moving along. I've got one very last question um, just with ETH and that cross-chain aspect of things. We've seen multiple land sales taking place on Cardano. We've seen multiple vehicle sales taking place on Cardano. You know, it kind of seems like ETH somewhat has to catch up if somebody's in that ecosystem looking to get access to Cornucopia. So, you know, what kind of um, sales could we see occurring on ETH in order to, you know, give them the same sort of exposure um, to land and vehicles like we've already seen here on Cardano? Well, we do have a vehicle sale coming up fairly soon. Uh, I'm not going to announce a date, but that will be right after we launch. The, the first priority is the ETH node sale NFTs, because uh, that's got some catching up to do with the Cardano side. But then there will be a, a vehicle NFT sale, and that'll be the Valkyrie uh, S-Class, which will be one of our fastest vehicles. And um, that's that's exciting. So we're, we're pretty fired up about that. But uh, yeah, the, and when it comes to land, um, there will be more zones. So currently, all of our our land was sold on Cardano, but we have more zones that we're going to be uh, full rolling out as well. And so when we do those land sales, I can't say that it'll definitely be on Ethereum or Ethereum and Cardano, but we'll we'll build out uh, and try to bring along the NFTs uh, on Ethereum over time. Uh, and, and just kind of see how that goes. We'll, we'll keep building and adding to it. I, we have a lot to do and uh, we definitely want to bring that ecosystem in. So yeah, um, that, there's going to be quite a few more ETH sales this year. All righty. I appreciate that. Um, I think that's going to wrap it up there for some of the cross-chain questions. <clears throat> the next topic I want to go into is going to be some opportunities right, for the community to stake their NFTs in order to earn the Kopi token or other potential benefits and rewards. So I think this was about maybe a year ago now uh, where you guys launched the first ever staking opportunity on Cardano. And I believe this was for land. And so, you know, on the roadmap for 2024, there appears to be an additional staking opportunity. Can you guys touch on number one, what kind of NFTs will be included? But then maybe actually tying back to ETH, will there also be a staking opportunity on ETH, given that staking just works a little bit differently um, on ETH than it does right now on Cardano? Well, that's a that's a great question. I think the next up for uh, the roadmap is staking for in-game fuel uh, of, the, of the vehicles. Um, and we, we've we looked into staking on ETH, but not exhaustively. And uh, so there's there's a good amount of research still, still needed there for how we're gonna handle that. But, you know, higher priority than any of that really is getting people utility uh, uh, for these player-owned assets in-game. That's that's the ultimate highest priority is allowing people, and that's one of the the fun, amazing things that we've been able to do as of late is all of our NFT holders, uh, land or vehicle, have now been given early access to the game. It is a free to play game, but if you own an NFT that's land or a vehicle, you currently can set up a player account and start playing inside cornucopius which is amazing now that does mean that you have to have a qualifying graphics card which is in most cases a 30 60 or above uh but it's open you just go go pick up an nft and and start playing which is huge um and you can use your your vehicles on the race racetrack and uh and engage in racing with other players and uh currently racing's phenomenal it's it's one of the funnest things uh, uh 
that we have released so far. Um, I, I really love it. It gets intensity. The community dives in. They'll they'll jump into Discord and and get everybody fired up to go engage in some racing. And so there's a lot there's a lot happening there. Uh, but we we're just getting started with that. So long way to go. Hopefully, I answered your question well. Um, yeah. the, the the one other thing on top of that, Josh, is staking for for land is is already in progress. So so those rewards are, are due to 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 be released in, in February. Yeah, so that started. Was that started in December? I think we started that in December. Yeah, right around there. Perfect. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate all of the insights there, gentlemen. Um, that's actually going to take us into, I believe, what's going to be the last segment. So about two weeks ago, we got the release of the developer update for the month of January. Uh, this is quite the exhaustive list. It's always impressive to see what is being worked on in the background in, you know, how many different things are going on. Um, I got to sit down with David, I believe, who's the lead developer back in Vegas for NFTLV. And to just kind of hear about everything that he's been working on in addition to the team always just blows my mind. So, you know, I, I can't highlight everything here, but if you guys want to check this out on your own, make sure to jump into their Discord. They do release these monthly and they're available there for download as a PDF. Now, some of the activities that uh, Josh just mentioned include racing. We've also been uh, getting some teases of fishing as well. If I actually scroll up here, I want to just quickly show off this art. I mean, super high quality like this, this, this is impressive. And again, the triple A aspect of cornucopias cannot be denied. So we're expecting things such as um, you know what? fishing. I'll make a comment. Let me yeah, make a comment there real quick. <clears throat> that was actually an example of cross training. That's that was done by our animator. It was the first time that he's so we're, we're trying to bro broaden some skill sets of certain team members. And uh, this was his first go. It was refined a little bit by our uh, our game director, creative director, but uh, yeah, Sean did an excellent job on this. So it's yeah. an example of just us trying to take our team and and build them up over time uh, and increase their skill sets and uh, pretty exciting. The expertise. Go ahead. Sorry, I interrupted you, but it, it just was a little fun fact that we could throw out there. I appreciate it. And this is what this platform was for, for you guys to talk about Cornucopius and give us all the details that we don't normally get the opportunity to hear. So thank you for that. And again, the, the expertise definitely shows and the quality shows there as well. Um, I think what I wanted to touch on was just some of the upcoming activities and, you know, where things just kind of fall in line. Um, again, you guys are building with the community. You know, we've already seen a glimpse of just the, um, the Kalito Valley, um, Megadome, where we're able to walk around, do the search for the hollow cache. We're now getting our, our hands on racing. Um, there's been teasing of fishing, mining at some of the recent in-person events as well, as well as gathering, survival, crafting. And we've even seen some screenshots of the inventory system. You know, so when do we get to get access to these pieces? And what is sort of the order or the focus in terms of priority moving forward for Cornucopius? Yeah, so so we're we're currently working on um the the 365 day plan so 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 how we work is we work on what we want to to build plan and, and deliver for the year and then we split them down into 180 day plans and, and finally into into 90 day plans and then they get cut down even further into what we're going to release the in the monthly builds because we, we're now we're going to release a build every month and then even more granular, what are we going to work on our two-week sprints on? So, so everything starts off with this much bigger plan. Um, that slide that you showed there is probably what we're going to work on over the next few months. We're, the, the list that we're actually going through for the, for the 360 plan is about four times the size of that. So some of those will make it. So some of those will be split down. And um, so, so we're busy looking at, at that and prioritize them. Um, but in terms of what we're going to deliver this year, we're, we're planning on delivering nine zones. So, so, so Solace, one, two, three, Esperanza, one, two, three, and Fortune, one, two, three. So, so all of those are eight kilometers by eight kilometers, including Kalido Valley, which our testers are currently looking at, which is actually nine kilometers by nine kilometers. The racing track take, takes up a lot of space because, because traveling at a thousand miles an hour takes up a lot of space. Um, but yeah, we're fishing, um, logging, mining, like you say, the inventory system, crafting, um, 
all the 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 kind of standard features that you'd expect with a with a, an MMORPG. We're, we're currently mm -hmm. working on planning and and some of those that we've actually had some some demos some prototypes for and, and those that those will, will move forward the the closest i think to being delivered probably is the character creator now that just needs a, a front end on it i say just needs you know that's quite complex in itself because under the hood we've got over like 300 different sliders where you can move things back and forwards and obviously the character creator is the first thing really that a player sees when they play an MMORPG. So, so we, we're, we're currently working on that. Um, and I think when, when people get to see that we, we will, we will streamline it. So, so it looks a, a lot simpler than, than it does at the moment. Um, but yeah, and then all these other tools will, will come out and we, we will introduce them slowly within the current Kalido Valley. And then pretty soon you, you will see that the first iterations of, of Solace, which will have the mining and the fishing. And and in internally now, like you said, Scruffy joined us um, a, a, about a month ago or so now, before Christmas, I think. And he, Scruffy and the testing team are currently working their way through through Solace. So Solace, is, Solace 1 has had its its first pass its art pass its second pass its collision passes all, all those kind of things that those have now been been handed over to the testing team and though they are working their way through through solace one and, and so you know we we think we've perfected that pipeline now so that we can quickly move on to solace two which, which is almost a state to to be tested and then solace three and and, and then so on but but yeah, there's there's a lot of work that that we're going to deliver this year. Um, and by the end of this year, there'll be so much content. You know, we, we will need an army of, of of public testers to to help us out there. Um, yeah, it is. It's so exciting to see the progress, how fast it's all happening. Yeah, I would agree. There's there's a foundation that's been laid. We've got our workflows in a variety of areas and. You know the workflows are incredibly important especially for something like solace because like rob said it's eight kilometers by eight kilometers really we need to figure out what the diameter is because well i guess it's the diameter is eight kilometers in in actuality we keep saying it's eight by eight because it's not a rectangle uh it's the diameter is eight kilometers i believe um and so so it's a sphere right but uh that's a huge amount of space and and we've got the workflows down to go all the way through from art and the development there uh, to, to building out the ecosystem, the environment, having the work boxes, and then all the way to the stage of testing where we have the testers go through. Uh, we've been talking to the team also about making testing a little bit more efficient uh, and improving and speeding up that process as well. And so that's huge. But the, the main point I wanted to make was just laying this foundation. The team is built uh the game loop we're we're progressing to the point where the game loop will get finalized uh or or the core game loop will get finalized uh maybe by mid this year or maybe slightly sooner than that actually and it, when that happens we should have the ability to start really adding to the team and having specialized teams work on certain areas of the game because the primary workflows have been developed and the processes are around that. So you can now add people to that system to expedite development there. So what we ought to see is an increased amount of content, uh, a gradually increasing amount of content coming out over time, uh, which is which is huge. So you guys will see, you've, you've seen now that we've got, I think Rob is at nine game releases uh, that we have at this point or somewhere yeah. around there. But, on June next week, I think. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be releasing content once a month, and so now what we're doing is we're working on our marketing system so that we can. So it, it before it's been somewhat irregular, but now we're making a game release once a month, and this way we can target our marketing around that uh, and all of our processes around that, so that we're keeping everybody informed of all the new stuff that's coming out. But the main thing that we want to emphasize there to the community, and we want people to see if you're new and, and you're you're just getting to know Cornucopius, we want you to see that we deliver on a monthly basis lots of new content. So you see that there's an effective and efficient team behind the scenes uh, making this better over time, gradually. 
Yeah, thank you for that. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing those content releases and to covering those on my channel. And to answer Rob's uh, comment there, just to, to add something to Rob's comment there about testing, I don't think that you guys will ever have a shortage of testers. So many people are looking to get their hands on this game. I think that'll be the easiest part of things is getting the product out there and getting that onto the community's hands for testing. So um, I understand you guys do have a call here taking place in just a couple of minutes. I want to turn it over to the both of you for just some very brief closing comments surrounding anything that you guys think is important to share here with the community or just how they can actually become a part of the Cornucopius game. Well, I'll, I'll chime in there. So that's a great question. I think closing comments, what I would say is I'm really proud of our community. You know, you see examples of that with, um, and I mean, proud of them. I don't, I don't mean proud of what we've built. However, I, yeah, I'm proud of that, but I mean like proud of our community in the sense that we have all of these passionate people about what we're doing that are adding value. And you see examples of that by us deciding, hey, let's bring on seven, you know, to to because he's he's so talented at what he's doing. Let's make him, uh, you know, and we've done that with multiple other people, Scruffy as well. And uh, there's a few others that we're actually talking to right now. So um, our community is is powerful. It's fun. It's inspiring. Uh, we've created a great culture inside our discord. And uh, I don't know that that to me is just such a great example of the power of uh, Web3, uh, but also just the power of co a collective mindset, a collective intelligence and and where something can go with the feedback of the community and with us working with them in tandem in tandem. And uh, and, you know, one thing that I'll say is that we're going to gradually move towards decentralizing uh, decisions around the game. So we are going to bring in governance and uh, allow the community to vote on things and uh, participate that way. And I'm, I'm really hoping that that becomes something that we do more aggressively this year as well. Uh, it, obviously, it's been involved from the get go, but we, we want to do that more so with actual votes and, and things of that nature. Um, so I that would be my closing comments. If if you're new to Cornucopias, come and get involved in our community. That's the best way to learn. People will answer your questions so quickly. Rob and I are in there sometimes as well. Uh, it's just fun. We've we a lot of our team goes in there to answer questions and help out. We've got great mods, great community. The the community as a whole, they're very informed on what we're doing. Um, I would say our community and our team, the people, is something that that I'm most excited about with Cornucopius. The team is incredibly effective. Uh, the community, we all work well together and uh, that's something that I'm most excited about. But um, yeah, just come get involved. It's very easy. Cornucopius game on Twitter is is our official handle where you can find our link, link tree that has the, the verified uh, or the, the correct links to all of our different uh, areas and, and channels, uh, Discord being one of them. Rob, I'm turning it over to you now. Well, I mean, I, I would, I would just say, you, you know, like Josh said before, you, we, you know, we're, we're a couple of years now approaching up to, to three years of, of development, which is really, really early in, in what we're trying to achieve. Uh, and That's so, nuts to me. We're approaching three years. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's, it is, it is true. Um, but where was I? Yes. Where was I going with that? Yeah. So, so but we are in pre-alpha, you know, so most, most companies do not release, release a pre-alpha version. So, so, so what you're seeing at the moment is such early stages, you know, the, there's not the amount of content there that, that, that will be there um, literally in a few months from now. I, I think looking at the rollout and what we've got planned for this year, we will have a, a slow release of, of builds where a lot of the features are actually in there, but not public. So, so other our testing teams can actually can see them. So, so a lot of the features are in there, and then we will just turn them on probably towards, I would say the end at the end of quarter two and onwards. You'll see a lot of really big releases coming from us. So over the next six months, we know that you know the the character animations and some of the features within there have. <clears throat> You know, lots of things for us to work on. We're well aware of that, but we are we are working hard on them, prioritizing some of some of the the main the main inf infrastructure and and features. They will come out bit by bit, but they will, again will be in pre-alpha, and and then we will we will 
devote once we've got some of these major you know the the fishing and the mining some of, some of the major core loops out of the way in the early stages you will see then um some really heavy focus on polishing up all, all the different aspects of it just like rumble ball you know it's pretty obvious rumble ball is, is pre-alpha whereas when you saw racing racing almost looks like it's, it's a full product that's come out so you know so, so you'll see different levels of game but um ultimately when everything is is ready um towards the end of this year I mean, you're going to have so much content that the game is absolutely massive. And with all the features that are in all these different huge worlds, it's going to be amazing to, to catch up in maybe six months or nine months from now and, and see that, see what we've actually delivered. Because I think it's just going to be bonkers. You guys are well on your way. Kudos to not just the both of you guys here, you know, obviously representing the Cornucopius game, but to the community and every other team member making the Cornucopius vision come alive. I wanted to just add one piece there, you know, with respect to what Josh had mentioned, you guys were one of the first supporters supporting me here on my channel, you know, sharing my content, introducing me to the Cornucopius community. And I think Rob was actually my 17th or 18th subscriber. So I'm closing in on 10,000. It's been quite the journey, but to have a co-founder spending the time to retweet, engage, and just show me support, uh, really let me know that you guys were different. So ladies and gentlemen, it's been quite the interview. We're going on about 45 minutes now. These gentlemen do have to run. But if you guys want to find out more about Cornucopius, make sure to go ahead and check out the description down below. I'll leave the links to their official website and everything else that you guys need to know in order to get involved with the community. Rob, Greg, Josh Jones, two of the co-founders out of four. I would love to get Ant and Jeff on potential future interviews, but um, it's been a blast. For the viewers watching at home, if you guys have enjoyed today's content, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by App Central and you want more content like this, highlighting the greatest builders here on Cardano, going blockchain agnostic, make sure to subscribe. And last but not least, if you have any questions for myself, Rob, or Josh, make sure to go ahead and leave them down below. That's it. And as always, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.